Thank you so very much for joining us this day for worship here at Starkville First United Methodist Church. We have an exciting time of worship in store for you this day. Uh, we look forward to drawing you in through the camera, into this worship service. And I pray that whatever we say or do here today will not only glorify God, but also will touch you and your family in a very special and powerful way. Thank you again for joining us for worship. Let's go now. Thank y'all for joining us here today. We're just so glad to have y'all here in worship. Can we, uh, can we move everybody to the middle again? Everybody, because y'all, y'all are just making the room unbalanced over there. Just a little bit. I like to have everybody centered. You know, share the warmth. I really appreciate that, y'all. I just, you know, it's cold in here sometimes. If you would just stand and greet somebody, somebody that you haven't met, somebody that you don't know, somebody that might be new to this church. Back to your seat to stand and join and sing with us. We're going to sing about God's holiness today. Just follow me. Let's worship God. You are holy. You are holy. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are worthy. I will bow down, be 
Prince of Peace, I will live my life for you. Just go to the Lord. Let's go to pray, oh God. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now for bringing us here. Lord, it's, it's Easter Sunday. It's, it's your son risen day. It's his rebirth, Lord. It's just the only person we know that has died and come to life again and gone to heaven like this, Lord. It's just so amazing, you know, the power that you have, the, the almighty grace that you've brought upon us all by his, by his sacrifice, Lord. And we just, we just lift that up right now, Lord, and we remember that, that he's, he's died for us to erase all of our sins and to just let us be healed when we're broken, Lord, and just give us a chance. Lord, I just pray that, that today we can open our hearts, and open our minds, Lord, and just open ourselves to you to worship because that's what it's all about. It's just about worshiping you and coming together as a, as a community in this church and just really, really trying to learn about you, Lord, right now. And we just hope that, that we can learn something from this worship experience and that we can just experience your Holy Spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing Amazing Grace because um, that's what it's about all today. It's all about God's amazing grace. So just sing this chorus with me and, and just think about God's amazing grace with me. What amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch. lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see so clearly, hallelujah, grace like rain falls down on me, hallelujah, all oh, my
say the day, and all will say, my glorious, my glorious, my glorious, my glorious, my glorious. Amen. Praise God for, for Jeff. He's just an amazing guitarist. And he really worships through his, his solos. And like, seriously, the Lord has just given this man a talent, and he really uses it to the best of his ability. So we should really appreciate him. Just 
Redmond wrote, wrote this song, the pastor at his church demanded that the church sing no more hymns for a whole month so they could really appreciate the full, the full blow of what it is to be in God in the Bible and in the scriptural sense instead of just the words of the music and, and just getting back to the, what it truly is to have a sense of, sense of worship. So let's just sing this with conviction to truly get back to the heart of worship, which is just to focus on God and get into the scripture and just understand his calling to you. Let's just sing this song again. King of Endless Word. King of Endless Word. Oh, we can pour All I have is yours Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required Much deeper within For the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship It's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. It's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. His hands, His hands. 
God, we do thank you for that wonderful cross, and we thank you for coming and giving your life so that we may know life. Thank you for giving yourself to death so we may, through you, defeat death. Dear God, thank you for the Holy Spirit which guided your Son on those difficult days especially during those final days. And thank You for that same Holy Spirit that's here today that's moving and prompting and causing us to be full of Your joy this day. Dear God, thank You for the words that have been sung and the way they've opened us up to hear now Your Word spoken to us. 
Thank you for this wonderful band that you have knitted together. And dear God, it's no doubt that they, are, they believe fully in what they're singing. And dear God, I pray that through the rest of this worship service, we could keep ourselves open to your moving so we may be changed. Dear God, touch us today at the places that we need to be touched the most. In your most holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 15. The bulletin says 1 through 10, but and, and it's possible, it's very possible, well, probably a fact that I gave verses 1 through 10 to Miss Helene who does the bulletins, but I meant to say 1 through 15. So verses 28, chapter 28, verses 1 through 15. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was drawing, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead people. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, and he said, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While they were going, some of the guard who went to to the city and told the chief priests everything that had happened. After the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You must say. His disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story is told among the Jews even to this day. The word of God for the people of God. For the last 40 days, we have been on a journey. And Thursday night, we gathered here in this church to remember Christ instituting the Lord's Supper. And then on Friday, we gathered to remember the crucifixion of Christ. Now today, we gather to celebrate the empty tomb. We have been journeying through this time of Lent. We have been listening, reflecting, listening to God speak to us through His Holy Word. And if, I don't know that if you've caught on to this or not, but over the last couple of months when I have preached out here, I've been talking about the people who Jesus met as He walked and journeyed to this day. We've met people like Nicodemus, and we've met people like the Samaritan woman at the well. We've met the blind man, and we, we've, we've met just so many people who needed a word, a touch, from the Master, from Jesus Christ. Well, on this day, we also met, meet another group of people. Matter of fact, two groups of people. And as you probably have, hope maybe realized, maybe you hadn't realized, but that Sunday morning, that these groups of people went to the tomb to see Jesus was uh, probably a, not like this morning as we've gathered to greet Jesus. There was only a few people there. Not, not, not near as many as we have gathered here. On that morning, there was only two groups of people. And those were the women. Matthew says the two Marys. And Mark's account of the crucifixion story as Salam as well. So there was a group of women that went there. And then there were a group of guards that were already there guarding the tomb that morning. Now, I know... I know there were angels there as well. 
But for this day, I want to talk about the humans that met Jesus that day. The, 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 the human people who were there. Now, I know you can get all, all into this argument. Well, aren't angels people? Well, let, look, I don't even want to go there today. I just want to leave the angels alone, okay? The angels are the angels. Uh, spirit, human, what, however you want to look at them. Today, for argument's sake, let's just, let's just agree on this. Let's agree that the women and the guards were the only group of people that went to the tomb that day to meet Jesus. Well, the guards wasn't there to meet Jesus, but they invariably met Jesus anyway. So there were two groups of people who went to the tomb that morning. And the women, they went, well, they went to bring spices. They went, to, to, they went there fully expecting Jesus to still be in the grave. And you say, well, how do you know that? Well, they went to put spices on the body because in those days there was no such thing as embalming a body. They were just as they were the day that they died. Jesus was in this, in this tomb wrapped up in the same uh, clothing that they put him in when they took him down off the cross on Friday. They went there that day fully expecting to find Jesus still in the tomb, even knowing what Jesus had already told them, that he would rise again. His own mama went that morning fully expecting to find her son still in the tomb. Well, the guards, as they were guarding the tomb that night, they fully expected to wake up the next morning and find the stone still there in front of the opening to the grave. And they too fully expected Jesus to still be in the grave. Everybody that was there that morning went fully expecting one thing. But as you know the story, they discovered something entirely different. For you see, when they got there, the Scripture tells us that as the women arrived, there was a great earthquake. Now, I don't know. I don't know. I can't tell for sure if the earthquake happened or the ground moved or the ground shook before the women got there or after they got there. So I don't know if they witnessed the moving of the stone or not. But Matthew's account kind of leaves the door open to the possibility that the women were witnesses to whatever occurred that morning that caused the stone to move away. We're not sure about the women. We're not sure if they were witnesses to the stone moving away or not, but we know for sure that the guards were there. We know for sure that the guards were there and they witnessed whatever occurred that morning to cause that stone to move. They were witnesses to the event. In fact, this Matthew tells us they were so scared about what had occurred, it was as, it was as if they were like dead people. I imagine they fainted. Oh, they, didn't, they didn't know. They weren't sure. But what we are sure of is that there were two groups of people who converged on that tomb that morning and looking to find it full, but instead they found it empty. They found it empty. Now, the reason why I keep focusing on these two groups of people because these two groups of people are about to play an important role in what happens in the life of the gospel message very quickly. Because see, these two groups of, groups of people not only witnessed the empty tomb, but they both also responded to what they found. They responded to the empty tomb. Matthew tells us when the women got there and they found it empty, that an angel spoke to him and said, Why are you here? It is just as he said. He has risen. He's not here. And I love what the angel says. The angel tells the women, Go quickly and tell the others. 
go quickly and tell the others. And then the text, in Matthew's text, Matthew says the women left quickly with both fear and joy. Both fear and joy. Now I find those two put together kind of ironic. Because fear and joy really don't, well, they really don't work together, do they? I, very times in my life have I been fearful and at the same time say, Oh, thank you for the fear, Lord. Very few times does it happen like that. No, on the contrary, most of the time they're opposing things. I'm either fearing or I'm, I'm either uh, joyful. But the, it, it's Matthew's account says the women left both full of joy but yet fearing. But I think what Matthew is trying to say here is that the women didn't fear for their life. They weren't scared uh, that, or that something bad was about to happen. I think the word fear here means they left not sure about what has happened or what has occurred. But what they do know is that they are full of joy, Matthew says, because it is evident that he is not there. They must have left kind of cautiously optimistic rather than fear and joy. Doesn't that sound better? Cautiously optimistic. They were optimistic that Jesus had did just exactly what He said He would do and He was raised from the grave, but yet they were cautious because, well, well, nobody that they knew had ever been brought back to life. So it was both cautious, it was cautiously optimistic. But what I do want us to understand is that whatever they were feeling that day, they were feeling much joy, even to the point that they ran from that tomb to go and tell others that Jesus is not here. Now, on the way, as they are running, guess who they run into? They run into Jesus Himself. And immediately, without a question, they knew who it was because Matthew says, immediately they fell to their feet. They fell to their knees and grabbed His feet and worshipped. They worshipped. They, the response was just automatic. There was no doubt about who it was. There was no doubt in their mind what had happened. They were ecstatic. They were joyful. And have you ever been to a point in your life or have you ever had an event occur in your life when you were just so joyful that you just had to go and tell somebody? Has that ever happened that, that you were just, something great happened and you, and you just need to find somebody to tell? Well, that's how these ladies were. That's how these women were when they, when they left the tomb. Maybe not so much, but after they met Jesus, then Jesus even says, go on and go into town and tell my brothers what has occurred. And don't you know that they, when they left Jesus, if you think they left the tomb quickly, man, nobody could have caught them that day they left Jesus. They had to get to town and to tell the brothers what happened, what they had witnessed, that they had seen Jesus, that He was alive and well, and it, it happened just as He said it was. Man, they had a message to give the world. And they were quick about sharing that message. Well, what about the other group? What about the other group of people who witnessed the resurrection that morning? What about the guards? What, were, what was their response? Well, one, Matthew says, it scared them to death. They were like dead men. They, just, they basically just passed out. They just really wasn't sure. But they left the tomb quickly that morning as well. Now Matthew doesn't say that the guards left the tomb that quickly. But you know they left quickly. And the reason why they left quickly is because their life was in danger. Their life was in danger. They knew without a doubt that if word got back to the king, or word got back to their supervisor, that they had allowed somebody or something to occur that night, that... That they, and, and they've lost Jesus. They don't know where He is. They left there with fear, not joy, but with fear because they, they were scared for their life. Now, rather going and telling the world what they had encountered, they went back to their bosses and with their bosses devised a plan 
to lie about what happened. They, dev they devised a plan, and they said, We're gonna, we will take money to lie about what has occurred. Hmm. Interesting response to this phenomenal event. Well, you know, I was thinking about this, these two groups of people who've witnessed the resurrection of Christ, who've met Christ, and how each of them left to go tell what they had seen, but they went, both left going telling two different things. One left to tell the world about the resurrection. The other went and told how they had goofed up how they had let their bosses down, had they, how they had let the king down. One, one went to live life, one went fearing their life was about to be taken. You know, every Sunday when we gather here at this church, and I don't know if you are aware of this or not, but every Sunday we celebrate the resurrection. Every Sunday that we any church gathers around this world, it's gathered around the resurrection. That's what we do. We celebrate a risen Savior. Not just on Easter, but every... Well, for that fact, I guess every single day is a day of resurrection for those of us who have experienced the risen Christ. Those of us who have had a personal encounter with Jesus, and Jesus has taken us and... As the band sang, washed those stains away. Washed our sins away. But I wonder, what is our response? How do we respond each time we encounter the risen Savior? What is our response? Do we go out of here on Sunday morning, having celebrated the resurrection, do we go with good news to go and share with the rest of the world? Do we leave here with excitement, going to share a message, a word that we've heard that has changed our life? Do we go ready to tell the others? Or are we like dead people? when we encounter the risen Savior, we say, well, that's good. Hmm. I'm going to put it in this little box and I'm going to take it with me and never tell anybody else about it. Because see, that was the message that was given to the guards that day. You take this money and you keep your mouth shut and don't say another word about what has occurred this day. Just in case you've missed it, today we have encountered the risen Savior. We have encountered Him through song. We have encountered Him through prayer. We have encountered Him through the story of that first resurrection Sunday. We say we serve a risen Savior as the old hymn says. We serve the King of kings, the Lord of lords. We serve the one who endured the cross but defeated death and rose on the third day so we may have life and life abundantly. My question for you this morning, church, is will you leave here as Mary and Mary and Salom did that morning, will you leave here after having worshipped at the feet of Christ, will you leave here ready to go and celebrate and shout hallelujah and tell those that you encounter? Or will you be like dead people who simply say, thank you Lord for what you did for me, but I'm not going to tell anybody else about it. Every time we meet the risen Savior, there is a response. How will we respond? How will we respond? Let's pray.
Dear God, we thank You for those people that You have put into our path throughout this life who, who know the joy of Christ and who are willing to share it. Who are willing to live it. Who are willing to walk it. Who are willing to go and tell the world about the risen Savior. Dear God, forgive us for the times we've been stumbling blocks because we've acted like dead people. Forgive us of the times that we've had opportunity to share the risen Savior, to share our faith, to share the joy of knowing Jesus. And we didn't. Dear God, may we leave here this day celebrating a God, a Savior, a Lord who is very much alive and well, and we know without a doubt that one day, one day, we too will be a part of the resurrection story when He comes and calls us home. Dear God, right now, my prayer is that we would respond to our encounter with You in a way that would demonstrate to the whole world just how much it means to us. In Your name we pray. Amen. We'll have a time of prayer. The altars are open for you to come and pray. I'm here to pray with you. I just ask you to be open to the move of the Holy Spirit at this time. And then we'll take up the offer and we'll sing a closing hymn. But right now, we'll be at a time of prayer. Sweet the sound, amazing love, now flowing down from hands and feet that were nailed to a tree. As grace flows down and covers. Amazing grace, how 
would stand and join us for our closing chorus. We're going to sing Let the Praises Ring. This is a, a very high, high energy song, so I want you all to get very excited because we're going out today to spread the word of Jesus, to spread that he is risen. So we should be excited and we need to let his praises ring and just go out today and, and just hear what Jason has said and just take it to heart and just really go out and search for, for people that haven't heard about Jesus and really go out and, and disciple and just do what he's called us to do. Let's just sing this together. Lord, my God, in you I put my trust. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my hope. Oh Lord, my God, in you I put my trust. Oh yes, I do. Oh Lord, my God, in you I put my hope. In you, in you I find my peace. In you. Everything I say and do, you found it by my faith to you. I lift up holy hands and sing, Let the praises ring. Oh Lord, my God, and you I give my. Let the praises ring. 
Let the praises ring. Let the praises ring. Let the praises ring. Let the praises ring. Let the praises ring. Christ our Lord has risen. Thank you. Somebody, let's try it again. Christ our Lord has risen. Amen. Amen. Go and live as resurrected people. Amen. Colin. Colin. See the banner? Look for a big striped shirt. I don't see it though. There he is. Okay. Okay. Colin, we're playing drums next Sunday. Be there. Uh, my drum sticks are gonna be in the closet. Uh, bring a snare if you want. If you want a new snare, you can get your snare. It's not a deal. Uh, be prepared to lift this thing. It weighs about 40 pounds. And it's very bulky. Not Wednesday, though, on Sunday. Uh, don't screw up. If you give me a bad name, I will kill you. Literally. I, 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 I will kill you. I know you can play. I'm not worried about you. 